I just I just want to tell you my my most fondest personal memory to date. Um, it happened. It was like a dark Saturday night. I was out there in Hollywood at OHM. Can't make the story up. True story. So I'm in there with the homie. We we're trying to have a good time, and uh, we got the hookah going. We having a good time. He tell me one of his shorties pull up in, in the club. So I'm like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? Just a regular club. Just a regular club. Yeah, OHM yeah, yeah. out in Hollywood. Homie pulls up with his shorty. They chopping it up, chopping it up. 10 minutes later, he talking about him and his shorty about the dip. I'm like, but we just got here. Right. That's kind of weird, but whatever, whatever vibe you on, like we got the hookah for like another hour or two. So I'm chilling, you know what I'm saying? With the hookah, he go do his little thing with his shorty. Now these two beautiful young ladies decided to come over have a conversation with me. Mm. It was like they be aggressive out here, though. Yeah, oh, I'm like wait, wait a minute. Both of y'all at the same time. I was right. like, this can't be true. Right. So uh, they asked me. They was like, excuse me, uh, young beautiful black sir, what are you doing at this uh, hookah little spot by yourself? I said, you know, it's crazy. My boy just left. Yeah. I had, you know, I had a little situation, but you know, it's just me. But if I want to sit down, I can sit down. Right. We started to chop it up. I started realizing. Uh, Shorty put her hand on my back. Now they together. Mm. So I knew that, you know what I'm saying? I, in my head, I'm like, does she know her girl got her hand on my back? Right. So in my head, I'm like, whatever, I'm just going along with it. Right. And then they um, they were like, well, we like your vibe. You want to go dance? Now I'm dancing with two of these women at the same time. I'm like, mind blown. I'm like, oh, I'm the man in the club. What? You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm really in the dance. <laughs> right. I'm the man. So <laughs> she looked at her, her girl, and this is when everything changed my whole life. Perspective change. She looked at her girl, looked at me, said, can we take him home? What? I said, what? What? Can what? we take him? Like you was just a puppy. A lot of puppy or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Please Damn. do. You know what I'm saying? So were you thinking at this point, maybe they competing for you? Maybe one of them likes you and maybe the other one may no, get mad? I, I felt it was a complete Mutual team thing. effort. I Damn. felt it was a complete team effort at the Damn. time. I said, yeah, girl, you can take me home. I ain't had a car at the time. So I was like, shit, fuck it. I'm high with you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in the backseat. Cheesing like right. hard, like they both in the front. I'm like, I can't believe it's going right. on. They ain't gonna believe it. We stop at the 7 Eleven to, uh, right. you know what I'm saying, to get a little some, some condoms and right, some right, uh, right. Gatorade, it's you know, protection. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some Gatorade, because yeah, you gonna be thirsty. Don't be thirsty it's after. two of us, too. <laughs> so I said, let me let me get the condoms and the Gatorade. This is when I. What flavor Gatorade? Oh, we gotta get the blue. Gotta get the blue. Gla we gotta Glacier the freeze. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we in the store, and this yeah. is when I was taken back. Yeah. I was like, okay, so I go to pay for, for the comms and the Gatorade. Shorty, the stud, she she stops me. She said, uh-uh, I got this. What? I said, girl, you such a gentleman. Pay for the Gatorade <laughs> the comms? I was like, damn. I'm like, oh, for sure, bet. Right. So, um, all right, so we leave there. I'm like, this is for sure going down. This is crazy. Never right. thought in my life. Right. Two women. So we get to the crib. They like, let's take shots. I'm like, oh, it's for sure going down. <laughs> right. All right, bet. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. We get to the room. I'm like, all right. <laughs> This is crazy. Right. First time, because I've never had this situation. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. heart beating fast. I'm right. like, what do I do? So they come in the room. They they doing what they do. And this I'm, back at their crib. Back at their crib. Okay. I done made it to their crib. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? So They in the area? They close to that? So we in the room. They on their- No, I'm saying they in the, like Hollywood area? This was, they were they were in North Ridge. Okay. A little dry, a little dry. Yeah, yeah a little, little dry. Yeah, a little dry. Wait. But right. I said, man, forget it. I'm patient. This right. may never happen again. Right. Right. So so I'm in there and uh, they started doing their thing. And in my head, I'm like, all right, all right, this is cool. I like what I'm seeing, but yeah. when, when do I get in there? You know what I'm saying? So they started kissing and doing all that. They was doing all their thing. And uh -huh. I'm I'm just watching, but I'm I'm impatient though. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, all right, I, you know, let me let me get in. You know, right. I'm trying to get in. And I realized when I got in, I turned the girl off. Cause and and she didn't say it right away, but she was like, um, "I gotta go to the bathroom." So so her home girl walked in with her, and she came back. She's like, "Yeah, what? my girl, she's not feeling it." What? Um, she said she's sick. I'm like, she's saying all what? these kind of things. I'm like, well, what about you? You good? Like, right. you know, how you feeling? Right. Right. But then she's like, "Yeah, it's probably not gonna work." And I'm like, y'all done got me all the way out here. What? You got the Gatorade. What the but but here's here's what I appreciated about Shorty. Shorty, even after letting me down easy, she was like, I know, I'm sorry we got you out here, but we did get you an Uber. I mean, Edgar, Man. Edgar will be out here in four minutes. It's, like, it's a great Hyundai Cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You should probably just start heading outside right now. Damn. I was like, damn. Still a gentleman, but damn. 
You know what I'm saying? So my message would be, you know, if you ever have two women, take you home. Just wait for them <laughs> to tag you in, tag man. You tag in. you in. Cause don't don't be like me, man. Cause you, you never know. It's like when you get to the championship and you lose. You might not never get back. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. But it's one of those situations. So Damn. that's just my message to the youth. Damn, <laughs> dog, that was close. You had me. I'm over here waiting for it to get. Then they just left you hanging just at the left last me minute. Hanging, man. Like, Damn. You can imagine my head, that 40 minute ride home. Right. I'm just sitting there like, man. That's crazy. I know you was thinking the whole way there, though. Like, ain't no way this finna go down. Like, this easy. It, it, honestly, everything happened so kind of like smoothly. It was one of those. She, situ- one of them probably talked the other one into doing it, and then she probably wasn't feeling it when it came down to business. But the thing was, in the moment, they was both about it, about it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like they had me feeling like the man in the right, club. Like right, right, right. I walked out the club with two of them. Right, you know what right, I'm right, saying? Right. So I'm in my head. I'm like, you nodding at the door and shit with a player. Yeah, I think yeah, like, like, <laughs> y'all see me come in by myself, right? Right, 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 right. right, 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 right. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, check me out now. You know right, what I'm saying? So right. at least the image leaving the club was cool. Yeah. I just didn't see it again. So that's that's why it's like, Dang. you know, hey, fellas, if you get a chance with two women, because right. it ain't going to happen often, two right. women, right. be patient, brother. Be patient. Be patient. Don't be like me. Right. You Trying to rush. Saying? It's like double dutch. Yeah. You just, you just <laughs> messed up the ropes. It's, yeah. like, it's an automatic failure right, right there. You know right, what I'm saying? Because right. you was just too eager. Just Damn. slow your road. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen to y'all. Damn. Just be patient. So let me ask, like, did you talk to them after that? Did y'all text? Did you try to keep in touch? I know you had some lonely nights. You was like, hey, nah, happy I'm, new I'm, year. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. I did try to keep contact. Uh-huh. I wanted to be like that that one companion friend. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Whenever like they both was tired of each other, <laughs> right. who they can call and be like, hey, right. at least Paul going to make us laugh. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I went to like a birthday party. Okay, you know okay, I'm okay. Like, I invited you to the party. Hey, what's up? I went to a birthday. Come on over here, cutie. Remember yeah. the way we almost gave some? You know Come on saying? over here. But unfortunately, they broke up, so I don't think that's oh. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry to hear that, y'all. Damn. So yeah. it was just a twofer. Now you it can't was, even get them at a one even, apiece. Can't even now. get one apiece because they them went separate ways, and it's Damn. like, shit, at least got one. Damn. You know, I'm mad. I'm, you know, I'm married. I'm over here living through you. And they're like, damn, <laughs> no, you was close, though, man. You was close. Oh, man, that's the worst when it's yeah, like when you can yeah. grab it. You can touch it. Yeah, I could have. You was envisioning this shit the whole way to ride. I'm sure it's like, oh, man, then her, yeah. man, she got the finish. I she didn't got stop the smiling the whole car ride. <laughs> just, just, just like smiling. you was in Disney yeah, World or some yeah. shit. I've never felt that way. That's dope. And just man. for it to go that way, to end that way, it was like, man, that's tragic. Damn. That's yeah, true. I don't know if that's just gonna happen again, brother. No, I don't know. It hasn't. It's been some years. <laughs> but hey, this is LA. I ain't no it's tell. Been, it's been I some think, years. Hey, after this quarantine, yeah. these bitches are gonna be ready after this yeah. quarantine. They that's why tell I'm here to say <laughs> to the lesbian community: if you ever need a third wheel, right? I'm cool. I'm right. I'm I'm friendly. Uh, I got all my shots. <laughs> right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm say tested. I'm patient. Yeah, I'm patient. <laughs> now I am. <have. laughs> now. <laughs> I'm good to go, is That's what dope. I'm trying to tell y'all. That's dope, man. Well, man, yeah. bro, I'm glad to have you on the show, man. man I'm glad to be here, bro. Especially brother. another brother from Texas, you know what I'm saying, from down yeah. south. You know, I'm from Shreveport. We were just saying from Louisiana. And Dallas is so close to Shreveport, man. That's why a lot of people are like, you from Shreveport? Ah, oh, that ain't Louisiana, because yeah. New Orleans is yeah. what everybody knows from Louisiana. But Shreveport's yeah. so close to Dallas. That's why I always been a Cowboy fan, because Texas is so close. Bro, I knew you was cool. Yeah, you know bro, saying? you already know what hey, it is, man. man. You shout out know. to the Dallas Cowboys. Shout hey, shout out to Dak, too, man. Shout out to the man. We out here. Get well soon, Dak. Right. Yeah, yeah. They got to get that shit together, man. Oh, boy, we look terrible this yeah, year. Yeah, terrible. yeah, yeah. They got to get it together. That man. defense, I, man, I don't even want to get into that. Yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole other show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, man, but you from Texas, man. Yeah. yeah. You said you've been out here like five years now? Five years going on uh, from Arlington, Texas, to be exact. And uh, just been out here grinding ever since, man. I'm trying to just figure it out as I go. You know how it is whenever you're, right. you're a dreamer. You start out in another city. Then Were you're you like, doing comedy in Texas? I was doing comedy at okay. the Arlington Improv. Got okay. started there. And then at that by that point, it was like it was just one of those situations where I'm like, you know what, man, I feel like the, I got that confidence to yeah. go up at every time and give like kill it. Right. So I'm like, the only thing now that I should do is just change the address. You know what I'm saying? Like right. look at it that way. Right. Instead of looking at it like, oh, I'm in LA. Oh, I'm in such a big city. Right. No, nah, it's just like you got the confidence, just go out there, you're just changing the address, go do your thing. Right. And just, you know, have faith. You know what right, I'm saying? That's right, the biggest right. thing in this thing. Really have faith is. and patience. Facts, 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 man. So what was that transition like, man? Because I know coming from Texas, you know, it's something that everybody talks about doing, everybody wants to do. What was it that allowed you to come out here and really make the move serious? Because visiting here is one thing, you know, they got spirit flights for $79. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah, yeah. know, but. And, and everybody want to visit. <laughs> everybody want to visit, yeah, yeah, yeah man. So how was, that, stay. how was that transition coming into a new place, getting settled and finding yourself 
and still making a name for yourself, you know, out here? Uh, the transition was, was, I'm not even gonna lie to you, brother. I mean, it wasn't as easy as everyone would think it is. Uh, you gotta go through some ups and downs, some trials and tribulations. Uh, I spent the first year and a half sleeping on my homie's couch. Mm. Just because I'm like, I'm just happy to be out here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So didn't have no room, didn't, you know, I'm just sleeping on the couch for about a year and a half, trying to just figure out going to open mics, going to whatever little mic I could find. Right. Wasn't until I got into uh, film school oh, okay. that I started kind of meeting more people in the industry. Meet, you know, that kind of helped uh, with the with the confidence and the just feeling like I know people out here. Cause you know, it, it, when you're in a new city right. and you may know like four or five people, whenever you got these fucking, I mean, these shows and, and the ladies telling you, you got to bring like six to eight or, you know, them Brand bringer shows. shows. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I don't even know nobody. Right. But right. film school kind of like put everything in a better little light. And then um, it's just been a constant uphill, just progression, really. I mean, right. I can't say that I've, I've went backwards. I've definitely been going forward the last couple of years and things have been on the up and up. You right. Know? So That's what's up, man. Well, we definitely been, you know, watching you, man, and keeping yeah, an eye on you, man. Yeah. So definitely proud to see your progress, man, because I know what, what goes all into that. Uh, some of the things that you're most proud of since you've been here, man. I say, hey, I see your TV credit, baby. Yeah, I see you. What is it? Revolt? Was yeah, it Revolt? Yeah, Revolt I see you on there. Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean that that is one of my one of my biggest accomplishments to date. Yeah. Uh, is just being able, just when I first started comedy, I always said I wanted to be on TV. Yeah, like I always was like, man, that'd be dope to be on. You know, I watched Kevin Hart specials and everybody's right. specials, so I know it ain't on that magnitude, but it's it's a it's a start. Of course, you know what I'm saying. And, it, and that right there was one of the biggest little moments in my career, just because it's like, just to have a little watch party with the. Uh, right. Family or friends. Right. Everybody and, back home thinking we out here bullshit. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Hey, I yeah. know him. Like, yeah. I know he said he went to Cali, but I didn't know he. You right. know, everybody take right. it a little more He's serious. Doing it, yeah. doing it. Yeah, takes it a little more <laughs> serious. So it's it's been it's been really fun ever since doing Revolt, and it's gave me a lot more confidence. You know, doing more television and doing more stand up just for you know networks. So, right. Um, I think that really just got me ready for what's next in store. You know, that's dope. That's dope. So, now, man, yeah. you said you in acting school. Uh, do you want to see yourself more on film as a comedic actor, or if it was up to you, would you just tour and stay on these stages? I mean, to be honest, uh, stand up is really what I feel like is gonna get me to that that next level. It's what's yeah. gonna open up doors, which it's opened up doors to this point. Yeah. It may not be on that magnitude of the the big doors, but it's opened up doors. I mean, sure. I'm here with you today, for sure. You know what I'm for saying? Sure, Through sure. stand up, so. Yeah. Um, of course, I want I want to do I want to be in movies, but I want my stand up to be what got got it there. Like I look up to people like Jamie Fox, yeah, um, Martin Lawrence, you know the OGs, uh, right. Bernie Mac, you know, Man. watching all them, oh, yeah, right. yeah, the OGs, um, and seeing them transition from stand up into the movies, right. and you know, and showing their other skills. Jamie Fox just wasn't with the stand up; he was with the music, right. he was the acting, and right. he showed his range, won an Oscar. Man. So it's like he got hella range. Yeah, so right. it's like. That right there is what really has inspired my movement going forward. You right. know what I'm saying? That's dope. So, yeah. I mean, so for people that don't know you, I mean, what what separates Paul from the next comment that they might think about booking? You know what I'm saying? What do you think you bring to the table that separates you from all of these other comments? Because you know in yeah, LA, yeah, everybody's, yeah, a everybody's a comedian. Everybody's a comedian. Everybody's a comedian. Everybody. Your waiter be whipping you some eggs. Yeah, man, I do comedy too. Be like, motherfucker, what? Yeah, everybody tells jokes. Give some more water. And it's funny because it's like, it's like you just be at you be at Buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> right. and the server be like, yeah, I, I do comedy too. It's like yeah. everybody, but um, Wait, say, say your question one more time. Yeah, what separates you? What do you uh, think What separates you... me? Uh, I feel like it's my originality. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I don't like to do is I, I don't really like to sit in the audience and listen to other comedians. I don't mm. like to, like, it's no offense to other comedians. It's just I like to feel like when I go up there, I have a free range on what to speak on, what I want to say. Mm. Um, so I really try to pride myself on being original. Yeah. And then uh, I don't got no filter either. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so right. I, I feel like, the fact that I'm okay with speaking on some of the craziness that's happened in my life. I live a crazy life, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So like a lot of wild stuff happens. So I don't mind sharing that on stage in a funny way. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like what's what separates me is my originality Dope. and my fearlessness to, you know, just 
to be 100 percent raw. That's fire, dog. Yeah. I mean, I think the drive that you that you have and that drive that you have to have in this business is unlike anything else because comedy is an industry. You're not getting financially, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, broke off. Sometimes you're not getting the respect that you want in no. a lot of these places, especially when you're the underdog and don't nobody know who you yeah. are. I feel like I've been the underdog as long as I've been doing this. Because yeah. you're not in the same circles, you're not on the same end, but you're not hanging out with certain crowds, man. Yeah. So is there anything specifically that that drives you and allows you to keep on continuing to do this because it's easy to say you know what i'm gonna yeah, do this it's, like. it's very easy but it's it's the acknowledgement from my peers really yeah you know what i'm saying or even ogs in the game that i've gotten to meet through stand up you know yeah. what i'm saying like uh, don't you do the uh, was it the radio uh, show radio earthquake? show with earthquake oh and, that's fine and, um i've been doing how that. did that happen though how you just come out here from texas and now you sit down earthquake man I, honestly man sometimes it's just about who you know <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying that's a real thing like it's about who you know uh I know uh, one of my partners, his name is uh, Kenny. Uh, he goes by Kenny Wackhouse, but he's yeah. like a boxing trainer. But I um, met him and he's real cool with Earthquake. Like nice. they're like right hand man. And nice. me and him became cool. And he actually told Earthquake about me like, hey, you know, I got a comedian, you know, we'll have him come try out for the show. If you, if you think he's funny, we'll put him on. And nice. just kind of went about, about it that way. And then it just... Um, talking two or three years later, man, just been doing, you know, a show from about like once or twice a month. It's, it's a blessing just to be in the same vicinity as comedians I grew up watching. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that, that whole yeah, nostalgic yeah, feeling of round circle, that yeah, thing. It's like, yeah, man, I grew up watching right. on Comic View, right? You know? And now I'm sitting in that in the same room, bro. and then it took me time to process get out of shit. that. Yeah, mind frame and be <laughs> right. like, all right, bro, I belong. Right. So it's 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 been that's been one of the biggest, like, I would say in my career that I look at and it's like, man, like. Just getting that uh, validation from yeah. OGs saying, right. hey, you funny. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like hearing that from someone who's done it 30 years Facts. in the game, Facts. it's like, that's what keeps me dr driven, Facts, keeps me bro. going. Man, you know? Shane was on the, one of the last episodes we had. Uh, you know, he, oh, Shane been yeah. in these streets for a long time. And yeah. I remember when I first did comedy in New York, one of the first comics I opened up for was Tony Roberts, yeah. who BT yeah, Comic View comedy. and Hello, I grew yeah, up watching yeah. him. So I got, you know, some support and love from him as I got on the game, man. So it's those motivators that yeah. definitely keep us grounded and keep us focused, yeah. man. And even though we have those times where we feel like, you know, man, I don't know if I, can do this, man. It's like it ain't no way. No. I came from too far. Facts. I've already decided this, so it's, it, you can't really. We're not back. turning back now. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. the, the, like I always tell my homies, like it don't even matter. Like, I'll, even though they're not doing comedy, like whatever it is they're applying their lives to, it's right. like, yo, we, we're in this to be great. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're not in this to be average. Like that's the kind of the mentality I try to instill in my friends. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, let's be great. Right. Let's, you know what I'm saying? We watch all these people on TV. We watch all these people on, you know, these athletes, and you know, we we praise them. We could be that same person if we put that same work ethic, right. that same energy, that same, have that same drive. Come on, preach to him, dog. I'm trying. Let the kids know. I'm trying. Let the kids know. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts. Seriously, though. Yeah. Like, you just got to have that that confidence and that and that composure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. stay composed during these situations. Understand that. Like hey, the man. composure you had when you was over them girls, Creed. Man, like, ah! hey, man. Hey, you was composing hey, it. Hey, that, that was one example I wouldn't oh, tell y'all to follow. Man. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't tell y'all to follow that. Oh, that's but dope, yeah, man. That's you dope. just gotta have that composer, man. So how's the dating scene better? Because you know I've been married, man, since yeah. I've been. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, but so it's good to talk to another Southern brother because yeah. you know these LA chicks when oh. they meet the Southern. Oh, you from Texas? They oh, do. Okay. They do love that. They ain't used to that. You know, opening the door. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's cool. So how's the dating scene been out here, though, man? Now, nah, first <laughs> off, I. I I've never really liked the LA dating scene. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't think it's real, personally. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, they want to know what you got, yeah. what you look like, what At you do. At the end doing. of the day, uh -huh. what's in your bank account? That's, uh -huh. that's the nitty gritty, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the, right. so the dating scene's been a little scarce, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I, I DJ at a strip club, so. Mm. Okay, this is a wrap, let's go. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so so you, can, you can understand that yeah. it's, 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 it's normally an issue, whoever I am dating, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, yeah. they never really have a, Normally they're 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 pretty pressed by the fact that I'm around. You gotta go to work every day, nigga. I'll be <laughs> pressed. Nigga. I'll be like, what, nigga? Hold up, man. You know what I'm, go I'm like, but I gotta pay these bills. Right, they're like, right. I don't care. I don't want you around them. It's like right. this is my job. Right. It ain't like I'm out here messing with all of them. Right. Just a couple of them. Right. 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 I'm sure. Right. Right. But nah, um, man, you got some stories on there. I, I got, got stories story. on stories. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just didn't want to give y'all too many stories. I know how much time we had. Right, right, right. But yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope, yeah. man. So, uh, in addition to 
uh, working. I know you got your job, your day job. You got to mm-hmm. have multiple, you know, grinds out here in yeah, order yeah. to, to kind of go. Um, how have you been uh, productive in this quarantine, this new COVID, this new? Because it's hard as a creative. Hey, hey, hey. We used to being on stage. Yeah. We used to kind of delivering there. What have you been doing to to keep busy or to take better care of yourself? Or have yeah. you still been productive? Or have you just been taking this time for self? How have you been? Uh, for one, I'll say being in the house all day has been tragic for me. Yeah. Uh, just because it's like I ain't got nothing else to do. So y'all right. can only imagine my browser history is <laughs> filthy. I'm talking, man. You like Hell a G- Jesus yeah. would look down on me like, come on, brother. Right. Again? Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nah, I, I've taken a step back. I I was like, you know what? Um, like I said, I've been doing comedy seven years. So I looked at this year, like as crazy as, as it's been, I'm like, you know what? Let me take a step back and let me reflect on myself. Like how how am I? Spiritually, physically, right. mentally, right, and you know, I just wanted to get everything back in order. You know right. what I'm saying? I I gained about thirty pounds during yeah. quarantine. Yeah, went from about one seventy to two hundred five. Never been in the two hundreds, wow. but that was an eye opener. You know what I'm saying? So it's just been one of those where it's like, you know, what? I can't be on stage, but I do try to write. Right. Uh, I've never been a writer. I've never been someone who really wrote my jokes, but I. I challenged myself to learn something different. Yeah, like you know what? I have time. I mean, I'm at home, so. Writing has been one of my my main fronts and working out, just trying to eat better, oh. you know, listen to a little gospel in the morning. Course, you know what I'm saying? Just trying much. to get the mind right. Most so definitely. that way, whenever things do open back up, I'm I'm ready to go. I don't got to be like, oh, I got to get in the gym. Right. Or I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I'm just ready to go. What's the old saying? Uh, be ready so you ain't got to get yeah, ready. Yeah, stay ready. Right? Don't got to get ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to yeah, get yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've just, I've just been trying to just stay mentally ready for whenever things open back up because I know it's it's a matter of time, you know? Right, definitely. It, what, we seven months, eight months in? I mean, right. I really predicted it was going to go to 2021. So yeah, I had a, I had that in my head like, you know what? Scrap this year. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Let's, let's use this time like positively. Right. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just... Being cool, kicking back on the EDD, you know right, what I'm saying? Because right, right, right. they do be coming through. Right, with they the be coming through. <laughs> but it's also like, all right, <laughs> let me make sure that I'm still in a comedic mind frame because right. that's that's the easy way out. You know what I'm saying? In these Let's times, get like, right. yeah, like we forget like while we're out here and we just right. find ourselves just living. Right. So it's like I can't be on stage, which I miss. Yeah. But let me at least be prepared. Let me write some new jokes. Let me, right. you know, I can't perform it yet, but shit, at least I got something ready to go. So right. when we do open up. Uh, so let's, let's, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Who got a show? That's you know what's up. What you ready? Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up, yeah. man. Hey, man. So, what advice do you have to leave us on, man? For anybody who is thinking about getting in the comedy game or is in a comedy game right now, having a tough game, uh, tough time, kind of getting through this year, man. Go and leave us on some uh, some last little um, tips, uh, things that you've been doing. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I always like these moments because I know I ain't, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I always like to give at least yeah. what I think of course. will be helpful, man. Yeah. And I, I always feel like one thing in, in comedy is you can't get down on yourself for one. You know what I'm saying? You, you're you going to have a bad show from time to time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You may you may go out there. You got to trust your material. So so go out there, try your jokes out. If it don't work, it's not the end all. You right. know what I'm saying? Some of them probably did work. Keep the ones that work, you know, work on the other ones. You know what I'm saying? But... Stay hungry, stay driven, uh, stay motivated. Right. Um, try to try to be the best in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just say, "Hey, just don't be happy with saying I'm a comedian." Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, have people try to make people, you remember know, you. remember you. Try right. to make people bring up your name when they speak on funny up and coming people, or right. you know, like, I, I just I just really be trying to like preach more on some, just have confidence in yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day. It's you up there. It ain't nobody else. Right. You got to be confident enough to go up there with a straight face or have whatever face right. and be like, deliver. You know right. what I'm saying? So my advice is just, man, stay confident. Even if your family's not, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I come from an African uh, household. Mm. When I told them I, mean, I, was, I always had a support that you were looking for, right? No. Uh, yeah. When I told them I was doing comedy, they, they were like, what? <laughs> Stop playing with us. You're, that is a joke. I'm like, no, seriously, Dad. I'm trying to be a comedian, and it right. took like years, like uh, four or five years, and they finally came around. But it's one of those things, like, even whenever you're doing it, it having that validation from your family, your friends, it's gonna keep you, you know, what I'm saying, motivated to right. keep going. So 
Just stay driven, stay motivated, stay humble. Dope. And, um, yeah. Dope. Just, I love that shit, man. Yeah. Hey, man. So, ladies, he out here, man. Get you one of these country boys, man. You know how oh, we do it, same. man. Hey, and if you don't come with to, in two with your friend, right, he's still open to talking with you guys. I, I, he's still, still open talk to right, one. Right, right. I still talk to one, but for the, the two of y'all out there, <laughs> if y'all want to relive the moment, I'm saying right. I'm patient now. That's right. all I'm saying. He patient now. Yeah. Dope, man. So, go on and plug us, man. Let everybody know if there's anything you got coming up that you want to promote, and please tell people where they can find you, man, because definitely people to keep up with what you got going on. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, once again, it's your boy comedian Paul Jairus. Uh, y'all can find me on Instagram at comedian Paul Jairus, on Twitter as well at comedian Paul Jairus. You can also find my uh, special on Revolt if you have on demand. It's season one, Funny AF. Uh, we got the Last After Dark season three coming up skirt, soon, skirt. so y'all okay. hang tight with that. And uh, other than that, man, I just want to give a shout out to all my people back home in Arlington, Texas, all my family in Kenya. Um, and I just want to appreciate uh, Laugh After Dark and uh, Charlie for the time. Most definitely, man. Yeah. Hey, man, you already know how it goes, man. Paul Jairus in the building, man. Yes, sir. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I've been your boy, yes, Charlie Wilson TV, man. Make sure y'all tune in next time. Stop playing with me, man. We'll see y'all at the next show. Yeah. Look at y'all out here tuning in. Ah, oh, thank you. I, I see. No, I see you. <laughs> yeah, make sure now, before you leave, make sure you like it, you follow it, and you subscribe it. I probably got some spit right there. You know what to do, though. It's Laugh After Dark.